Hey everyone, Laser Dave here with TroTech Laser. This video will guide you through the first time installation of your brand new Speedy 360 and Speedy 400 laser machines. Let's get started. For Speedy 360 and Speedy 400 unboxing instructions, please see the unboxing video by scanning this QR code or selecting the link in the description below. This video will showcase a detailed installation tutorial for the TroTech, Speedy 360, and Speedy 400 laser engraving systems. Having already unboxed these units in a previous video, we'll now focus on the precise steps required to install them properly. The Speedy 360 weighs 446 pounds, or 202 kilograms, while the Speedy 400 is 770 pounds, or 349 kilograms. Ensure that the location where the laser will be installed can handle the system size. Measure the desired area to confirm the laser machine will fit, accounting for extra space around the system. This video will provide the guidance necessary to achieve a seamless installation for these advanced machines. Here are some of the installation requirements. A room with temperatures between 59 and 77 degrees Fahrenheit or 15 to 25 degrees Celsius. Do not install the system in a high dust area. The humidity must not exceed 70%. Do not install in areas with poor air circulation. Install away from shock prone areas. Ensure the system is two feet or 60 centimeters from the wall for cooling. The Speedy 360 is the smaller of the two units and is designed to fit through a standard doorway with a max width of 33 inches or 84 centimeters. The wheels on the laser machine make it easy to roll the laser into position. The Speedy 400 is a much larger laser machine and will not fit through a standard doorway. This system has a width of 38.5 inches or 98 centimeters and will require an extra wide or double door to bring into a location. When placing the laser system near a wall, please ensure ample space behind the laser, at least 24 inches or 60 centimeters clearance from the wall for proper laser cooling. Once the machine is in place, open the top door and remove any blue protective films on the motion system. This blue film may not be present on some systems. Skip this step if there is no film. Next, locate the air valve on the left side of the motion system arm shown here. Rotate this valve to the left as often as necessary to turn the air volume to maximum output. There may be a lock bolt that needs to be loosened the first time before it can be turned. Locate the red box that comes with the laser machine for all the accessories to install the machine and make sure everything is included. This box will include lens tissue and cleaner, a quick reference guidebook, an ethernet cable, set of metric hex keys, two air nozzles or cones, and a collar. Included lens kit or kits if more were ordered. The keys to the laser and a power cord. Locate the collar, which will be red or gold, depending on the system, and place this into the red focus head of the laser, shown here screwing it into place. Next, locate the small hole nozzle or cone and screw it to the underside of the laser head until it is finger tight. Locate the lens and remove it from its case. This lens will vary based on what is ordered. Once removed, take care not to touch the lens and slide it into the focus head following the arrows on the lens for direction. Then adjust the collar until it is tight against the lens and tug at the lens to confirm it cannot be moved. Next is hooking up the exhaust to the laser machine. All laser machines must be operated with sufficient exhaust to mitigate fire hazards and health risks from particulates and vapors. Before laser processing, consult with your material provider for safety guidelines. Effective ventilation is essential to preserve system integrity, maintain optimal cutting performance, and ensure the longevity of laser functionality. There are two choices for an exhaust system. A closed laser exhaust system using a filtration system like the TroTech Atmos Pure filter systems. Scan this QR code or see the link below for information on these filter units. Depending on local laws, the other option is an external blower system designed to ventilate a laser to the outdoors. This kind of system will require many components to be purchased. Here is a basic diagram of a traditional external exhaust system. 
Always ensure the exhaust blower unit is at the end of the line for safety and noise. The further the distance the air must go, the size of the ducting and the size of the laser machine will determine the requirements. See the links below for detailed information on creating an external exhaust system, including links to most of the necessary components. While we provide the resources to support those installing an external exhaust system for their laser equipment, we strongly recommend engaging with a qualified HVAC professional to ensure optimal safety and performance. Expert installation guarantees that your equipment functions at its best, safeguarding your investment and peace of mind. Hooking up the exhaust to the laser system is easy. Locate the exhaust ports on the back of the machines. Place a flex hose onto these ports by simply pressing the hose onto the bottom and the top ports. Then, place the other end of a flex hose onto your filter unit or the outlet of your external exhaust system. Once the exhaust is hooked up, the next step is connecting the laser to power. Depending on the machine, the power requirements will vary. Both a Speedy 360 or Speedy 400 machine, running up to 60 or 80 laser watts, will only require a 115 volt 20 amp circuit and will use a NEMA 520P receptacle. If the Speedy 360 or Speedy 400 machine is running 120 watts of laser power, it will require a 230 volt 20 amp circuit and will use a NEMA 620P receptacle. Please ensure the correct power is located near the laser machine before installation. Retrieve the supplied power cord in the red accessory box. Locate the power inlet at the bottom right side of the machine. Plug one side into the laser machine and the other into the correct electrical outlet. Next is getting the machine hooked up to your network for data. Locate the LAN port on the bottom right side of the laser machine, just above the power port. Retrieve the supplied Ethernet cord from the red box and plug it into the LAN port on the machine. The other end of the LAN cable can be plugged directly into an Ethernet port, if available. This LAN cable can also be plugged into an Ethernet router or splitter into any open port. Additionally, this LAN port can be plugged into a mesh Wi-Fi hub to link to your wireless network. If no wired Ethernet port is available and Wi-Fi is used as your local network, you will need to order a Wi-Fi range extender with an Ethernet port on it. For this to work, first link the range extender to your Wi-Fi with the supplied instructions, then plug the LAN cable into it and plug it into the wall. Links are in the video description below for this range extender. If using the Trotec brand Atmos Pure exhaust filters, the laser machine can communicate to this exhaust to turn it on and off automatically. To do this, locate the data cable that comes with the Atmos filter and plug it into the laser machine with the port labeled Exhaust. Then plug the other end into the Atmos exhaust unit The laser is now ready to be powered up. Retrieve the small set of keys from the red box and place the key into the keyhole above the touch display. Ensure that the emergency stop switch is not engaged by turning and pulling to confirm it is not pressed in. Go to the back of the laser machine, locate the master power switch near the power cord and turn it on. Turn the key to the first position to turn on the display. The internal computer may take a few minutes to boot up the first time. Once the computer is booted up, select the settings button at the top of the touch display. Then choose Ruby Remote for QR code links for system activation on any computers on your local network. For Ruby Network setup instructions, scan this QR code or see the link below for a detailed video on setting up your connection to any computer on a local network. Once connected to a remote computer, turn the key to the second position and close the top lid of the laser, and the machine will start up, homing the focus head and Z table. Next is to get familiar with the laser's operational software called Ruby. Scan this QR code or see the links below for a getting started with Ruby video. 
Now that the system is installed and powered up, it is time to run a file to confirm the operation of the machine. Place a sheet of material into the center of the laser machine. Using the system arrow keys, move the focus head over the material and press the up and down Z key simultaneously to focus the laser using the included sonar autofocus. Once the laser is focused, close the laser lid. Open Ruby and go to the design screen. Create a basic test file by selecting the text button at the top of the page and typing your name. Then, select the Selection tool and scale out the text by choosing a corner and dragging it out. Now select the Rectangle tool and drag out a box slightly larger than the text. Select the red color from the color palette to turn it red, making it a cut path. Select the Selection tool again, then move the text, snapping to the center of the rectangle. Now choose Fit to Design, then select Create Job to send your newly designed file to the Prepare screen. Turn on the overhead camera and place the design over the material, leaving extra material room around the file. Extra room is necessary because the overhead VDP camera will not be accurate at this stage, as it still needs to be calibrated. Select the material from the list of materials. In this example, I will choose the 5mm solid cherry wood, then select Push to Laser. Select the file from the Laser System LCD screen, then select Start and run the file. The laser will first engrave the black and cut the red for a finished laser engraved nameplate. Use a damp cloth to clean and then remove it from the laser. The finished engraving should be crisp and sharp, and the cut should look clean, as shown in this example. Now that the machine is installed and operational, it is time to create a calibration mat and calibrate the overhead camera. Begin by placing the provided plastic sheet into the laser cutter and removing the protective film. The exhaust system will create a vacuum in the cutting grid, ensuring the sheet is held securely in place. Next, for detailed Ruby instructions on calibrating the overhead camera for all the lenses you've purchased, as well as guidance on camera operation, either scan the QR code provided or use the link below. These instructions are provided in a step-by-step -step format for your convenience. Remember to keep this calibration mat after completing the process, as it will be needed for any future recalibrations or when calibrating additional lenses you might acquire in the future. Now that the system is installed and calibrated, it is time to start your in-depth training on Ruby. Scan this QR code or see below for all the links to begin your Ruby training. This easy-to-use software will allow you to go from idea to product with all the processing steps integrated into one intuitive software. You may also visit rubyhelp.com anytime for updated training and information on Ruby. Here are some laser projects to get started with your new Trotec laser system. Scan this QR code or see the link below for 160 step-by-step -step projects with instructions and template files that you can follow directly. At Trotec, your seamless experience is our priority. If any questions arise during the installation process, please feel free to reach out to your nearest Trotec showroom or sales representative. For comprehensive support, including technical assistance, Ruby training courses, pre-installation guides, manuals, and more, we invite you to visit the Trotec customer portal at mitrotech.com. Our dedicated team is here to ensure that you are well taken care of. Now take your new laser and make something unforgettable. If you have any questions, please let us know in the comment section below. And don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell to see other informative videos. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time.